Dear teachers and my class fellows, we, Group 6, are going to talk about money market and goods market. Before we jump into the material, here is our member's name. The definition of liquidity money supply The LM, or as known as liquidity money supply, curve is a curve that shows the amount of national income at various interest rates that meet the balance requirements on the money market. So what is money market? The money market is a market that brings together the demand for money, or L, and the supply of money, or M. According to Johnny Maynard Keynes, there are three motives for public money demand, namely for transaction, precautionary measures, and for speculation. These are some factors that are affecting LM curve. First, changes in money supply. The increase in money supply due to the government monetary expansion policy shift the LM curve rightwards. On the other hand, a decline in money supply will lead to the leftward shift of the LM curve. Second, autonomous changes in money demand. This means that no change occurs in the money demand even due inflation, deflation, interest rates, or the level of aggregate, output, or income. So the increase in autonomous demand for money shifts the LM curve to the left. Third is the sensitivity of money demand for transactions and precautions. And the last effect is the sensitivity of money demand for speculation to interest rates. Balance on the money market The goods market and the IS curve The goods market is a market that brings together the supply and demand for goods and service. The goods market is often termed the real sector or the production sector. While the IS or investment saving curve is a curve that connects the interest rate I or R to national income. The balance in the goods market The balance in the goods market or equilibrium in the goods market occurs if investment is equal saving. The definition of monetary policy according to UU number 23 tahun 1999 tentang Bank Indonesia. Monetary policy is a form of policy established and directly implemented by Bank Indonesia by controlling the money supply or interest rates in order to achieve and maintain the stability of rupiah value. Monetary Policy Goals The main goals of monetary policy is to create stable macroeconomic condition. In general, this is the purpose of making monetary policy. The first one is to keep the price stability. The second is to balancing the payment balance. The third is increasing job opportunities and the last one is the growth of economic and equalization of income. Monetary policy also have a few functions. The first function of monetary policy is to increasing more job opportunities for citizens. The second is to keep the stable of currency exchange rates. The third is to control and manage the inflation. The fourth is increasing the economic growth and the fifth is maintain the investment climate. There are three ways to indicating the success of monetary policy. The first one is monetary targeting atau uang beredar. Caranya adalah dengan menetapkan pertemuan jumlah uang beredar sebagai sasaran menengah. Kekurangan dari cara ini adalah sulit dimiliki oleh masyarakat dan juga penerapan ini terkantung kepada pengelolaan sistem antara pengelolaan sistem dan konsolidasi atau inflasi. Kesehatan itu Sistem targeting atau penargetan nilai tukar caranya adalah dengan menyesuaikan dan menetapkan nilai mata uang domestik terhadap mata uang negara-negara besar yang memiliki laju inflasi rendah. Kekurangan dari cara ini adalah tentang terhadap tindakan spekulan atau gejolak yang terjadi di suatu negara dan langsung berdampak terhadap perekonomian domestik. Kelebihannya lebih sederhana dan mudah dipahami masyarakat, dapat meredam laju inflasi dan penargetan nilai tukar ditetapkan dengan aturan yang dapat mendisiplinkan kebijakan moneter.
Monetary policy instrument is divided by two instruments. The first is directly instrument, that is the instrument that controls the amount of money in circulation by influencing bank policy. There are four types of direct instrument that can be used. The first is determination of the maximum amount of credit for customer channel through bank. The second is determine the interest rate for loans or deposit made by Bank Indonesia. The third is determining the liquidity ratio, namely the obligation of commercial bank to maintain currency and raise fund to finance the government budget. And the last is send commercial bank to provide credit to certain sector for the community. The second is non-direct instrument. Indirect instrument work by influencing the operational goals desired by central bank. The first is open market operation policy. The policy of buying and selling securities carried out by the central bank to influence rupiah liquidity on the money market. This policy will affect the money supply, interest rate, and exchange rate. Second is discount rate. We to be able to regulate the amount of money in circulation in the community by playing the central bank interest rate at commercial bank. The third is moral persuasion. Monetary policy in the context of regulating the money supply by using an appeal to economic actors. The fourth is selective credit. Central bank policy in order to reduce the amount of money in circulating by tightening credit distribution. And the fifth is reserve requirement ratio. We to regulate the money supply. However, different from discount facility, this is compulsory reserve ratio. The method used is to play the amount of bank reserve fund that must be deposited with the government. According to Macroeconomy Pengantar Teori 2006 by Sadono Sukirno, money supply has two definitions. There is definition in small scale and definition by wide scale. Definition by small scale. Money supply is defined as the amount of currency and demand deposits in circulation at a certain time. While wide scale, money supply is defined as the amount of currency demand deposits and quasi-money in circulation at a certain time. Quasi-money is money stored in a bank in the form of savings, time deposits, and foreign currency. According to Economy Monetaire 2014 by Jimmy Hasoloan, there are some factors that influence money supply, namely, first, central bank policy. There are several central bank policies that affect money supply, namely the open market operation policy, the discount policy, the cash reserve policy, the selective and loose credit policy, and the new money printing policy. Second one is level of society income. Basically, the higher the income of the community, the more money the community has so that the amount of money in circulation is also higher and the other way around. Third one, price level. An increase in production costs will basically cause an increase in the price of goods and service. If the price of goods and service rise, more money must be available so that people can pay for the increase. In order for this to be fulfilled, the government must increase the amount of money in circulation. And the fourth, people taste. If people's appetite for goods and service increases, it will encourage an increase in demand for goods and services. If the demand for goods and services increases, the price will also increase. And the last is increase in the production of goods and services. If the increase in the production of goods and services is not matched with an increase in the amount of money in circulation, it will cause deflation. So that deflation does not occur, the government must increase the amount of money in circulation. The definition of market balance is the balance between the money demanded by the community for various motives equal to the amount of money in circulation or the offer of money to the community. 
Money market balance is indicated by a curve called the LM curve. So what is LM curve? LM curve, as known as kurva LM, adalah sebuah garis atau kurva yang menunjukkan berbagai hubungan antara tingkat suku bunga dengan pendapatan nasional dalam kondisi keseimbangan di pasar uang. Keseimbangan pasar uang terjadi pada kondisi fungsi permintaan uang sama dengan fungsi penawaran uang. The definition of request money is the overall amount of money that the community wants to hold. The demand for money by the public is based on three motives, namely the motive of transaction, the motive of court, and the motive of speculation. The demand for money for transaction motives is strongly influenced by the amount of income received by the Y community or national income. While the demand for money for the motive of speculation is largely determined by the amount of interest rates. Money request function. The function of requesting money transaction motives and guarding can be expressed with linear equation such as the following: the one L1 sama dengan K dikali Y. The money request function of speculation motive can be expressed with linear equation such as the following: two L2 sama dengan M0 plus M kali R. Based on the two function of money, the function of money as a whole can be expressed by the following equation: L sama dengan L1 plus L2 L sama dengan K kali Y plus M0 plus M kali R. With caption K sama dengan delta L1 per delta Y M sama dengan delta L2 per delta R dikali M kurang dari 0 R is interest rate M0 is request money when R sama dengan 0 Y is national income Money deal The amount of money available to finance all transactions made by the community. The money offer is also referred to as the money supply amount. Graphically, money supply is a vertical straight line curve upward. This means that the amount of money in circulation will remain regardless of the interest rate offered. In other words, the amount of money Inflation is not inflated by interest rate. Y equal one divided by k times s minus m zero minus m times k. Value of m is less than zero, so that the LM balance function becomes y equal one divided by k times m s minus m zero. Minus negative m times r. Demand for money for transaction and keep in the economy of the community is the function of r1 equal 0.25 y, and the demand for money to speculate is l2 equal 400 minus 500 r. While the amount of money is MS remain at 600. Determine the balance in the money market and draw a curve of X LM function. Units of money in trillion rupiah. A. Money market balance. L equal L1 plus L2. L equal 0.25Y plus 400 minus 500R. L equals MS. So, 0.25y plus 400 minus 500r equal 600. 0.25y equal 600 minus 400 plus 500r. 0.25y equal 200 plus 500r. Y equal 800 plus 2000r. B. So the balance of the money market is indicated by the LM balance function 
in example y equal 800 plus 2000 r lm money market balance score is y equal 800 plus 2000 r the name lm means liquidity money the lm curve gives the combination of income and interest rate for which the demand for money for desired liquidity equals the money supply and hence for which the domestic economy is in asset or stock equilibrium the lm curve depicts the set of all levels of income or gdp and interest rate at which money supply equal money or liquidity demand the LM curve slopes upward because the higher levels of income or GDP induce increased demand to hold money balances for transactions, which requires a higher interest rate to keep money supply and liquidity demand in equilibrium. The last material that we are going to talk is about monetary policies in Indonesia. We all know that we get stuck at home for almost one year now due to COVID-19. COVID-19 is causing a lot of problems including the degradation of our country's economic activities. That is why Bank Indonesia come with five monetary policies to resist the impacts of coronavirus in Indonesia. So these are five monetary policies that Bank Indonesia take to prevent the bad impact of coronavirus on economic in Indonesia. First, Bank Indonesia increase the intensity of intervention so that rupiah's exchange rate could move stable. Second, Bank Indonesia decrease gyro wajib minimum or GWM falas valuta asing of conventional bank from 8% to 4%. The reduction of kilowatt minimum falas can increase valuta asing liquidity. Nah, dengan ini, maka akan semakin memperkuat stabilitas nilai tukar rupiah. Dan kebijakan ini juga akan mempermudah perbankan untuk memasukkan falas. The third one, as a result of this pandemic, export and import have been going rough. The fee of import from other countries is categorized as expensive. That is why Bank Indonesia decreased GWM or Giro Wajib Minimum Rupiah into 50 BPS. Nah, penurunan GWM Rupiah ini yang sebesar 50 BPS ditujukan kepada perbankan yang melakukan kegiatan ekspor dan impor yang tentunya koordinasi dengan pemerintah. And the fourth, Bank Indonesia akan memperluas jenis dan cakupan underlying transaction bagi investor asing di dalam melakukan lindung nilai, termasuk domestic non-delivery forward. So, dengan adanya expand underlying transaction, they or foreign investors can take off SPN atau surat utang negara and add it to their account in Indonesia or account in rupiah. And the last is Bank Indonesia mentioned that foreign investors can operate custodian bank either global or domestic in doing infestation in Indonesia. So we come to an end of this video. I hope that our video about money market and goods market can be helpful for you. Here is a motivation word that I quote from Robert Collier. Success is the sum of small efforts, repeated day in and day out. That's all you guys. Thank you.